third experiment, constructing an ammeter and a voltmeter. Using a galvanometer, which measures currents at microampere order, an ammeter and a voltmeter will be constructed. For this purpose, two quantities should be determined, the internal resistance and the maximum deflection current. In order to calculate these quantities, construct a circuit involving the galvanometer, a rheostat, and a power supply. You can adjust the current flowing through the galvanometer by changing the resistance of the rheostat and the output voltage of the supply. Fractional deflection method will be used for calculating the internal resistance and the maximum deflection current of the galvanometer. Power supply output should not exceed 2 volts. Now the pointer of the galvanometer, now the pointer of the galvanometer is at maximum deflection. Use the multimeter to measure the power supply output and resistance of the rheostat. First, measure the power supply output. You should use the voltmeter part of the device and connect the cables as indicated on the display. Record the measured voltage as V1. Now measure the resistance of the rheostat. You should use the ohmmeter part of the device. Record the measured resistance as R1. Now readjust the power supply output and the rheostat to adjust the pointer to half maximum deflection. Now the pointer is at half maximum deflection. Measure the power supply output and the resistance of the rheostat and record the values as V2 and R2 respectively. Now use the formulae in your manual to calculate the internal resistance and the maximum deflection current of the galvanometer. Now you can construct an ammeter whose range is 100 mA. A shunt resistance will be used in this construction. This wire will be connected in parallel with the galvanometer as the shunt resistance and the combination will serve as an ammeter. You have calculated the internal resistance and maximum deflection current of the galvanometer. Using this information, calculate the required value of the shunt resistance for constructing a 100 mA ammeter. After that, calculate the required length of the wire. Now construct a circuit using these results. One end of the wire is connected. Use the crocodile cables to adjust the required length. This system will be the constructed ammeter. Connect this system to the power supply, the rheostat and the standard ammeter. The multimeter can be used as the standard ammeter. Set the range of the multimeter to 200 mA and construct the circuit. Adjust the current flowing in the circuit by using the power supply and the rheostat. This current should not exceed 100 mA. Compare the readings of the galvanometer and the standard ammeter. The angular deflection of the pointer and the current flowing through this system are directly proportional and maximum deflection current corresponds to 100 mA. Use this information to determine the reading of the constructed ammeter. Compare this value with the reading of the standard ammeter. Now you can construct a voltmeter whose range is 2.5 volts. For this purpose, you will use the rheostat. The multimeter will serve as a standard voltmeter. The constructed voltmeter will consist of the galvanometer and the rheostat. First, calculate the required resistance of the rheostat for constructing a 2.5 volt voltmeter. You can make use of the multimeter in order to adjust the required resistance. Construct the circuit after the resistance of the rheostat has been adjusted. 
Connect the galvanometer in series to the rheostat. There is a voltmeter system here. The system is connected to the power supply. Connect the standard voltmeter to the power supply. You will compare the readings of the standard and the constructed voltmeters. Angular deflection of the pointer and the potential difference across this system are directly proportional and maximum deflection corresponds to 2.5 volts. Using this information, determine the reading of the constructed voltmeter.